Howdy mates, how are we doing? Here's a part two video of Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary that I'm visiting. So, I, you know, I had a chance to reach another part of this park where I have a chance to point out some more plants that you can see here. So to my right, you may notice this guy right here with the white petals and then the yellow anthers in the middle and how it has a, uh, a what you call a world uh, arrangement and I don't mean world as in planet world I mean it as in W H O R L E D or world basically what that means is think of it this way think of like a compass for example, right? You have the compass that is a single plane, like a planar surface, and then you have your four cardinal directions, you know, north, south, west, east. Well, essentially, the same concept applies to a whorled leaf arrangement. The lance leaf arrowhead, that's the name of this plant, it is also known as duck potato, just because this plant is known to be tuberous. So that means they do produce tubers underneath the surface. Because potatoes that we commonly know are another type of tuber. So that's why it's oftentimes called that. So, another plant that I need to point out, there are two more, got one to my left, you can see, see those uh, purple, purple blooms right there? That is your, that is known as pickerel weed. It's a very common native plant in the state of Florida. They usually prefer marshes, which, for those of you who don't know, a marsh basically refers to a type of wetland because there are four distinct types of wetlands that exist in the natural world. One being marshes, two being swamps, three being bogs, four being fens. Now oftentimes in Florida the most common types of wetlands that you will see are swamps and even marshes. Yeah, I had to like collect my thought for a second. <laughs> so, usually bogs and fens, on the other hand, I've tended to see those a bit further up north, but there could be some down here for all I know. So, yeah, basically a marsh that we're looking at. It's a wetland that is mostly made up of just simple vegetation, whether it be flowers uh, or even uh, ferns, for example, and maybe some shrubs. But then you look ahead of me and you actually start to see what you call a swamp. A swamp is just a fancy term for saying it's a forested wetland. So you could say the Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary has quite a bit of variety of habitats, whether it be pine flatwoods, wet prairies, marshes, and even cypress forest. So there's a lot going on here. So another plant that I wanted to point out to you guys, too, is you see some of these right here, you know, with the broad leaves especially. Well, that particular plant that we are looking at is what's known as alligator flag. Now, alligator flag looks very similar to pickerel weed. This is actually a perfect opportunity for a comparison. So just below me, right here, this is a pickerel weed. 
as you can see the leaf arrangement like right there it has more of like a heart shape and it's a lot more what you call um, pointed whereas you look a little bit to the right same thing broad leaf but on the other hand this is more of like a oval shape that's how you can tell the difference and oftentimes alligator flag grows a lot larger in terms of height you know sometimes alligator flag can reach as tall as six feet which is basically my height so that's just a comparison whereas pickerel weed on the other hand might only grow two to feet two to feet two to three feet tall jeez once again stumbling upon my words so alligator flag basically gets its name from the fact that they usually prefer deeper water which is the case some of this water that we're looking at is probably about two or three feet deep so it's it's got some depth to it at some spots anyways it just depends where you're at so basically the plant gets its name because alligator flag has been used to indicate alligators are nearby so it's essentially used as a flag as a marker to let people know that you can find alligators in the given area so that's that's essentially how the name stuck ever since but what i enjoy about this park really the most is just the educational exhibits so it talks about like right here the types of lizards that you'll see whether it be brown anoles or even green anoles now you're more than welcome to pause and read if you so desire but the brown anoles that we see down here they're actually considered to be an invasive species because they are originally native to parts of Cuba so given that Cuba it really isn't that far from Florida it was easy for them to come over here usually in the form of ships they just simply took advantage of that. I would too. <laughs> yeah. So here we actually have an opportunity to see basically a, a wet prairie slash marsh. And rest assured, this is all fresh water too. There's no, there is no salt water here that lies in the area because we are a bit further inland hold on just a second you guys all right you guys see the red flower right there as actually another native plant down here it's actually known as swamp hibiscus now swamp hibiscus you will also commonly see in marshes but oftentimes the Swamp hibiscus is mistaken for cannabis <laughs> based on its uh, leaf arrangement it looks very similar but rest assured they are not related in any way shape or form but the swamp hibiscus is it's another favorite among our pollinators whether it be butterflies or even moths too so that's, that's another thing that you can enjoy about this park. Since really not much native vegetation has been varied in some way, you will start to see more of your native pollinators too. And there's really no invasive plants out here either. So that's why I said this is like one of the only remaining parcels of South Florida that remain undeveloped and also maintains a higher number of native vegetation. 
So it's, you know, it's also an educational trip as well. So, all right, you guys, forgive me. I know this is like over 10 minutes long, but of course there's always so much to talk about. So thanks for watching, you guys. Take care. Enjoy your Wednesday. And journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.